So we'll start the southern border. You have an extensive border protection plan. A big part of that is just more boots on the ground. Is that correct? How important is that part of the border plan for you? Uh, the, the border plan will work all together. You don't just take one part of it because you've got to have a comprehensive plan. And we have the most aggressive border plan this country has ever seen because we have the biggest uh, invasion this country's ever seen going on at our border. I've been to the border many times and we have to be, get very serious very quick about that. So day one, we declare an invasion on our border and we get the ball rolling for the state to take over control of the border and make sure that it's, it's safe and secure. And that means we will put boots on the ground. Right now, the Border Patrol is in a tough spot. They're controlled by the federal government and Joe Biden's in control of them and he's okay with people coming across the border. And so we need to go down there and stop people from coming across. We will additionally finish President Trump's wall project. It's about 27 miles left of that. We're gonna use the, the uh, materials that are left on the border to finish that. We paid for those. Those are taxpayer funded material. And we're gonna take that back and finish the wall. And we're gonna work with other states, like-minded states. I've already gotten assurances from Governor DeSantis. He will send Florida National Guard to stop people from coming over. And so it's, a, it's an, a big plan. I just barely scratched the surface of it, um, but people can find it on our website, carrylake.com. Yeah, and we can't, obviously, in this setting, can't go out through everything, but yes, it's a, it's a very big plan for the, just the, the Arizona Rangers part of the plan, and as well as the National Guard. How do you, how do you plan to kind of just move those resources, those state resources, once you, uh, you know, have control of the border, as you say, if you were to go through with that? What do you mean move them? Get them down to the border? Yeah, yeah where the, the manpower and as well as the, the resources and the funding to get Well, the, the, the resources and manpower that I have uh, control of, that I'm in charge of, kind of as the commander in chief of the state, we will put where we need them, where people are coming in. And we'll use intelligence and find out where people are coming in. We're, we're not going to allow the cartels to control our border anymore. We're taking that back and we're going to send a very loud message on day one that they're no longer in charge of our border. They're no longer allowed to run drugs through the border. We're seeing a record amount of fentanyl pour in. What we've, that's just what we've seized. And you and I both know that the cartels don't let us seize all of it. And so you know we've seized enough to kill billions of people. And we know that fentanyl is killing more young people than any other cause of death. And I'm not okay with that. And the people aren't okay with that either. We are the pipeline for fentanyl coming into this country. And it's a weapon of mass destruction. And we're not going to allow Arizona's reputation to become a state that's controlled by the cartels that is sending poison in to kill Americans. You, follow, you mentioned following President Trump's lead when it comes to the wall. You, you've aligned yourself with President Trump over the past couple of years. Uh, there are independents and even Republicans out there who don't necessarily support President Trump, what would be your message to them watching this who may not be a fan of him or his leadership when he was in the White House, uh, but obviously you still want them to have your vote? I'm running on the issues and the issues are uh, very obvious what they are. We have a wide open border. We have crime surging on our streets. We have drugs pouring in. We have an economy that's faltering. We have an education system that's brainwashing our kids. This is Joe Biden's America. I think everybody out there would look back at their time when President Trump was president, whether they liked him or hated him, and they will say, yes, my life was better under President Trump. You don't have to love him to love America First policies. We have no choice but to take and, and go with America First policies right now to get us out of the mess we're in. And so we're gonna take those America First policies, we're gonna bring them Arizona level, Arizona first, and we're gonna start putting the people of Arizona first. And, and we're gonna solve a lot of our problems that way. So I, you know, hey look, I love President Trump, I think he's great. You may not, that's okay. Do you wanna to work to end street, chronic street homelessness? Yes, I think most people do then you're gonna love our plans. Do you wanna make sure your kids are getting a great education, where they're getting trade school training, vocational training, right there in high school, so they're ready for a career out of high school? Then you're gonna love our plans. Do you want a secure border, where people aren't coming in illegally? Then you're gonna love our plans. And do you wanna stop the fentanyl crisis? Then you're gonna love our plans. Okay. That has nothing to do with President Trump. That has everything to do with protecting Arizona. I'll go off of one of those issues mentioned homelessness. You have mm -hmm. a large homelessness plan as well. Um, and in there, there's a there's a portion of it that's kind of simplifying it, get treatment, go to jail, or get going. Is that how you would sum it up 
in very short terms, uh, how you kind of view it's the kind issue? Of a, yeah, I guess it, it's a good way to, to do it. And the, the, the point is, we're spending 87 billion, I believe, now in Ukraine, and we have people living on our streets. I'm not okay with that. God did not intend for us to live in despair on the streets in a tent with a needle in our arm. And we have to do better. And we're gonna help people. We're gonna help people get off the streets. We're gonna help them get into treatment. And sometimes it takes something called tough love. I know, I've, I've had um, friends and relatives who've, who've struggled with addiction. You've gotta use some tough love, but they've gotta have some skin in the game. We're gonna help them get treatment, help them get help for their mental illness, and if they refuse, there is a small segment of the population that lives on the streets that's homeless, that just wants to live on the streets. They want to continue to use, and they're going to continue to use, cause trouble. We're going to start making life more difficult for them to do that because we want to urge them to get help. How do you plan to do that, the, the get going part? How do you plan to encourage The get going the, part is if, if they refuse out. to get help and they're uh, trespassing and they are using drugs publicly any crimes that people commit we're gonna do the broken windows policing and that means we're gonna start going after crimes little crimes lead to big crimes lawlessness leads to more lawlessness so we will arrest people if they're com committing crimes and then we'll expunge that arrest that that arrest record if they agree to get help that's how we will encourage people who don't want to get help to get help and I'll tell you what, once you clear your mind from the drug-induced psychosis, once you get clean and start to see that there's a better life and become a productive citizen, you're not gonna wanna go back to that. There's a great place here in town called the uh, Opportunity Center. I'm sure you've heard of it, hopefully you have. It's amazing. Um, Bert Lopez has put a lot of uh, love into the center. And they're doing exactly what our homeless policy is. So if you wanna see what our homeless policy looks like, go check out the Opportunity Center here in Tucson. It's fantastic. Uh, well, I will check that out, but for the people that do want treatment, how do you plan to you know, get more housing or more beds in centers uh, that's different than the efforts that are going on now that obviously aren't creating enough of those beds? Well, the problem is a lot of people don't want to get into these uh, homeless shelters because they want to continue using drugs and they don't want to follow the rules. And we're, we're going to ban um, what they call urban camping, which is basically right. the tents on, allowing people to live on the side of the street. Right. And, and we do that. We can't do that unless we have enough okay. shelter beds. We don't have to have fancy shelter beds. We just need to have enough shelter beds. And when you get enough shelter beds, then you can say, okay, now we're not allowing camping in, ten, uh, in parks, camping along the side of the road. And so it's an advanced, it's an advanced um, program, but we're going to work on it, and we're going to actually work to make an effect. You've got to put services first not housing first. When you put housing first, if you've ever known someone who's an addict and you say, hey, you can come live in my uh, spare bedroom, but you don't have to do anything to get better, pretty soon you're going to have a drug den. We've got to get people and get them better. We must get them help. And, and there'll be missteps along the way. I'm not going to say everything's going to be perfect. We're going to work to make a big impact in people's lives to help the people who are homeless and to help the tax-paying citizens who want their streets back. They want their parks back. I'm just going to get this last issue in, just seeing okay. that we have yeah, a little bit of time. Yeah, we got to run. I got to go speak. Uh, Hotbun issue this year is okay. abortion. Do you, you? I know you're anti-abortion. Do you support exceptions for uh, the life of the mother, rape, or incest? Yes, I do. I do. Now, those only one, I believe, the life of the mother exception is included in the current laws. I know there's some confusion on the Arizona laws right now. If you were to be elected governor, how would you handle those laws in terms of changing them or not changing them to have those exceptions. Well, the truth included. of the matter is we don't know what the law is right now. It's in the courts. And I'm running for governor, not emperor. And so we have to see what the courts decide. We don't know which law is going to take effect, and I'm willing to wait and see. And so um, I'm hoping the courts will, uh, will decide, and then we'll figure it out from there. If we don't like our laws, we have a system in place to, to change those laws. We elect legislators, and they change the law. I don't write the law the legislators do, so I will... I will uh, enforce the laws of our state, and if we don't like the laws, we need the legislature to change them. And so I'm, that's how I operate, which is within the law.